Welcome back, Money Vikings Collectibles, where we talk all things collectibles, investments, and just ways to live a great life. Please smash that like and subscribe button if you like ideas and inspiration to become wealthy and healthy. That's what we're all about. So welcome back, everybody. Really appreciate you uh, checking out our videos. I got a really special one for you today about the top five valuable Copper Age comic book investments in my collection. And uh, I want to share these. These are key issues, and I think they're very good investments. I'm holding on to them for the long run, and I uh, expect they will rise in value. There's also going to be some honorable mentions at the end as well. Um, I would say this. Check your mom or dad's storage unit, basement or attic. Comb through those garage sales and thrift stores. If you find any of these comics, then you have struck gold, especially if you can get a good deal on them. They're very valuable, and they sell uh, constantly on eBay and other sites. Ah, the good old days. Yes, the copper age of comics. We all have them. We all have good old days, and we tend to romanticize the past. It's probably due to a certain time in our lives when we had less responsibilities, and the world felt like a new and creative place. That's probably the value of uh, collectibles and nostalgia and uh, a lot of this uh, pop art to a lot of people. I know that's part of it for me. Um, I try and cultivate that spirit in life at every age. And frankly, one way I do this is through collecting art and creativity. And that gets me to the copper age of comic collecting. This is generally the period of comic creation from the mid 1980s up to about 2000. This was pivotal. This was a pivotal time for many Gen Xers and millennials, uh, definitely coming of age at that time. But we, we, ne we know now that the creativity in comics uh, of that age was, uh, you know, enjoyed by all, all ages of people, really. I personally think this was an amazing time in comics history. The boundaries of the art form were being pushed, as we'll see with some of these examples. And just pop culture was going in new directions. This was the age that comic conventions became big business, and eventually Hollywood took serious notice in the creative potential of many iconic characters, as you can see here, of course, Spider-Man. Today I'll share five of these top-notch Copper Age comics that I consider works of art and valuable investments that I believe will go up in value over the years. Not investment advice to anybody, but these are the ones that I'm putting my money into. And finally, they're just beautiful works of art and something to enjoy. My first rule of collecting is to enjoy the collectible. If I don't find something about beautiful about it or some intrinsic value about the collectible, I don't invest in it. It's that simple. I don't care what the world says, if it's the most valuable thing. If I just don't like it, I don't buy it. But these are ones that I like. Let me share something important about comic collecting. Key issues are no longer printable. No more are made. And many of these books were not deemed collectibles at the time they were produced. Therefore, copies became scarcer over time. Remember the principles of supply and demand. When supply goes down and demand is high, the value rises, such is the case with key comics. So this has partly been kind of our gripe recently with magic cards, right? The ability to counterfeit and Wizards of the Coast reprinting cards, devalues for collectors. It becomes quite difficult for this to happen to comics. This is one reason I diversify in collectibles just as I would diversify for other assets. So first up, without further ado, as you can see and have seen here, is Amazing Spider-Man 252. From the mid-80s, it's important because it's the first time Spider-Man dons the black symbiotic costume. The black suit was originally an idea of a fan that wrote to Marvel. And Marvel bought the idea from the fan for a few hundred bucks. Can you believe that? It's so popular now. The suit takes on a life of its own as a symbiotic entity that gives Spider-Man increased powers and an edge. The suit made its Hollywood debut in 2007 with Spider-Man 3. And this suit and story arc is not going away as the suit is now a fan favorite and part of the canon. The book has a record sale of over $6,000, but nice copies ungraded can be had for about $250. And I'll check out a couple pages with you. I do want to try to open a few of the books and show you the inside. Because I think that's part of enjoying them. There he is being <laughs> taken over by the suit. That's pretty cool.
All right. So that's my first one of the Copper Age. I'm going to carefully put it back. Um, obviously, condition is everything when it comes to collectibles. So condition, condition, condition has to be considered. Uh, keeping these in really good condition is critical to collecting success in the long run for sure. And hopefully I don't damage these trying to put them back. All right, so that's the first one. Right there, Amazing Spider-Man 252, iconic, gorgeous cover. I love that book. Next up, the Infinity Gauntlet one. We all now know, now know the Infinity Gauntlet through the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Avengers, etc., etc. It's a key fundamental aspect of that whole universe. The concept of the Infinity Stones was, invent, was invented back in 1975 by Jim Starlin, but it's now obviously become a fundamental element of the Marvel Cinematic Universe and the Avengers. This is the comic that started it all and a key Copper Age collectible. High grade copy can go for anywhere 300 to 2,000 bucks. Let's take a look inside, shall we? And the, as you can see, these are, oh, there's a nice Dungeons and Dragons advertisement on the back, back when that was popular. Doctor Strange. And you can see these books are in um, quite good condition. Maybe not mint, but doing really well. This book really, this book somehow stood the test of time. So very cool. All right, put that one back and we'll go on to number three. Key Copper Age collectibles that I invest in. Number three. X-Force 2, second appearance of Deadpool. We all know Deadpool now. Deadpool, very popular, very popular from the movies. Uh, copies of this can go for over $600, um, but they can be had for a lot less. Let's check out second appearance of Deadpool as we got to see him. X-Force number two, you can see him right there on the cover, which is very cool. Oh, the Terminator, nice. Okay, we've got Cable, got the X-Force. See if we can get a good image of Deadpool here. Oh, there's a fight scene there, pretty cool. That's a nice one, nice action move there with Deadpool. And very cool, starts out with a lot of action. Pretty, pretty neat. Let's see if we get anything else back here. I think it's the main stuff up there. Some cool advertisements on the inside and the Marvel cards in the back. All right, again, very nice copy. You always wanna to try to get the best copy that you can. And you know, folks, the comic bubble kind of bursts, so <laughs> there could be deals to be had at this point when people are selling. Next one up is Amazing Spider-Man 298. This is a key critical issue because it's the first Todd McFarlane Spider-Man artwork. There it is. McFarlane, clearly creator of Spawn, but he's an iconic uh, artist for Spider-Man. Uh, just gave whole new life and energy to the, uh, the drawings and the art. And this was the first time that he drew Spider-Man. And you can see he was really developing his style at the time. But some of that, the, the, <laughs> those faces, you can definitely recognize his style uh, as it was evolving and this was his first opportunity to uh, do the spider-man thing so very cool right there prices can be pretty random with this one it's a little bit of an under the radar uh, book because the key aspect of it is the artist not the character a lot of times the character uh, drives the price more than an artist but you know that is the case Next one up, Sandman number one. This can go as high as $1,700. Raw copies can be picked up for far less, but everyone now knows because of the uh, Netflix show, Sandman, very popular. 
uh, but this is a very popular Neil Gaiman uh, comic series that uh, broke new ground, of course, and uh, definitely, you know, got us into a different kind of world, uh, you know, a lot different than the, you know, the capes and the costumes of traditional superheroes like Spider-Man or Superman or Batman, and uh, got us into a whole other dimension, which was really exciting at the time, and really still is. Just, you know, a masterwork of storytelling and uh, just an all-around beautiful book right there. Sandman number one. Now, with comics, you know, especially at that time, they, um, they were not really considered collectibles as much. It was kind of starting at that time, but a lot of these got trashed and lost over time, so... Again, that's what I talk about. The scarcity issue with comics is, is quite key. And more, you know, each year, a number of these are lost. So they become scarcer and scarcer over time. I'm going to do a couple honorable mentions. Um, we have Batman 428, Death in the Family with Robin. If you ever find one of these at a garage sale or a thrift store for a really good price, I would pick it up iconic cover. I just always found this cover absolutely majestic and magical and, and horrifying uh, and shocking. But again, a brilliant work of illustration. And when this ever, this was, this would always, you know, hang up on the, on the display stand at a comic shop and everybody wanted it. But uh, very important book. Next honorable mention, Spider-Man number one, McFarlane, the relaunch. Um, I like the silver version a lot. <clears throat> This relaunched Spider-Man in the 90s. And there was a little, there was kind of a cool little Easter egg thing where you could count the number of uh, spiders on there. I think he would he would sometimes write the number there and you try to find them all. And this one he put a question mark. Like, I don't know. He doesn't know how many there are, which is kind of cool. Uh, but this is a key book. Um, it was over, I think it was uh, too many were printed. So you can actually buy these, I think, for relatively good price. Um, it was kind of co considered a collectible item, too, at the time, so people really held on to them. So, again, I think you have a high supply, high demand. Oh, it looks nice. Looks nice in the light. Watchmen number one. You can never go wrong with Watchmen. I would definitely pick this up if you ever see it. Highly valuable book. And the last honorable mention, anything Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are very popular. There's going to be, I think, a reboot uh, movie, but the old books are worth a fortune now. Um, it's kind of started as almost like a joke, but it really took off. Uh, in modern times, I like to pick up these, like, free comic book day, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle comics. Um, these will go up in value over time, again, because of the popularity and probably because of the comic book day, uh, logo there. So there you have it, folks. Um, that is a pretty good overview of some very valuable Copper Age comics. I hope you enjoyed this. Again, if you like collectibles, if you like building wealth, if you like investing, if you like all kinds of ways to live a healthy, wealthy life, please smash that like and subscribe button. I would really appreciate it. You can let our um, YouTube uh, algorithm robot overlords uh, know that you liked this. I'd appreciate it. Hope this is of value to you, and uh, we'll see you all next time. Take care.